Good morning, everybody. And today we're going to get into a brand new film called Armageddon Time. Now, many of you had requested that I take a look at this film. And I was shocked. They mentioned Fred Trump and Marianne Trump by name. And they also tell the story of Trump's Q Forest Grammar School education. You know, the one that we exposed three years ago? Welcome to the Matrix, everybody. Yes, the Q forced Marxist education that we exposed three years ago. In which they were preparing people for work. And preparing certain students for elite roles. To rule over the working class. Unbelievable. Let's get into this. Now, the film opens with a shot of the World's Fair New York Pavilion. You know, the Men in Black Towers that we had exposed. Because this site is a portal. Now, in Men in Black... They said that Corona Park, Flushing Meadows, Queens was the home of aliens hiding among us. It was the site where Dorothy came down as well during, or she came down through a portal shaped like a giant Q in the movie The Wiz. Remember that? This is the site where all of that was filmed. We also covered this crown-like building that you see here. A crown in a park called Corona where a future president who came from Corona would fight the coronavirus. Unbelievable. Now, the crown is inverted. It's an upside-down crown as you can see right here. Now, they call this the Tent of Tomorrow, is the technical name of this particular structure. Looks a lot like a carousel. It looks a lot like a lot of things, doesn't it? But since it's in Corona or Crown Park, to me it's a crown. Tent of Tomorrow. Now this site also appeared in the film Tomorrowland. And many of you will remember in the movie The Wiz, this O is where Dorothy crashed through, through a portal, except there was a Z in the middle. And when the Z was broken off as she crashed through it, it made a Q. Just a little piece was hanging out. Wow. And of course, the World of Tomorrow, World's Fair, Trump Billboard, remember that, from 1939. And the links to Tomorrowland, which was all about time travel. Now, this is getting really creepy, because now what they're doing, as you're going to see next, is they're literally making movies out of our decodes. Now, are they literally doing that, or... Is God revealing something before it happens? Well, I think God is revealing something before it happens on this channel. And then when it manifests in our reality, it's supposed to send you running to the arms of Jesus Christ. Because he is the source of all this. And I've always given all the credit to him. Haven't we? So, you can't like these decodes and not believe in Jesus because it all is coming from him. I'm nothing without him. So, what is Armageddon time about? Let's get into that. Well, it's a coming-of-age story of what appears to depict Trump's childhood. His school that he went to, there are themes like racism. It also talks about the Jewish 
Ukrainian experience because the family of the boy who seems to be Trump's family are from the Ukraine. And they're Jewish. There are also themes of elitism, the haves and have nots. Now, the story goes like this, and I've got a montage put together for you, and I'm giving you the backdrop of all this. In the film, the boy, Paul, who plays the Trump character, he becomes friends with a boy of color, who is very vocal about his disgust for the system. And of course, this ends up getting him in trouble. He becomes a targeted individual because of his negative attitude. And in the end, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, we've talked a lot about this on this channel. That as people of color, we have to break the cycle of self-fulfilling prophecy when it comes to race. I've shared with you my example. My mother's before me and her mother before her. Who had successful careers as people of color. Who were able to retire and have comfortable lives. Without a bunch of problems. Other than programmed people of color in their lives who attack them because they did get through the glass ceiling. Like, well, I'm not going to get too personal because, you know. But anyway, needless to say, people that my mother have has helped through their lives, through all their problems, making excuses for their color as to why things didn't go right for them when they got hooked on drugs and did all kinds of things and were thrown in jail because they didn't play by the rules. And then they ended up turning on my mother, even though she spent countless hours helping them, giving them money and assistance. And still, because of the self-fulfilling prophecy, their lives ended up in disrepair. Now, I know there are people out there that think because of my light complexion, I don't, I don't count as a black person. Well, my father, who is very dark complected, who did qualify for some people as a black person, was also successful in his career. He worked in a correctional facility. And by the end of his career, he made well into the six figures. And he retired in the 90s. Now, I know some people are sensitive about race. And I, some people believe, oh, it's about where you grew up. Well, look, there are a lot of things broken about this system. But one thing that isn't broken is a fair opportunity if you apply yourself. Now, in the end, ironically, it's Trump, played by a boy named Paul, who becomes the bad influence. And it lands his best friend Johnny the boy of color, in a detention facility. And he becomes marked for life because he took the blame for a robbery attempt of an Apple computer from Paul's school. Now, this will all begin to make more sense once we start to break down this montage, but what you're going to see next is elements of all of these decodes that we did, and I put them together here in a playlist all these decodes that we did over the past several years about Q, Q Forest Grammar School that Trump was in. You're going to see all of that depicted in this film. Here's this Q Education Here videos from years ago. Here's the Wiz film with the Q in it. There it is right there. You can see that. Flushing Meadows. Men in Black. Here's all the stuff we did on the World's Fair. Here you can see the crown. We've covered all this. There's Tomorrowland. And I'll put this. All of these playlists in the pinned comment. Let's get started on this. This is shocking. Let me make sure you guys are with me. Keep going with this. Unbelievable. Okay, looks like everyone's filtering in, no, no buffering issues. All right, let's get started here. Armageddon Time is the name of the movie. Let's get started. If we don't do it now, if we let this be another Sodom and Gomorrah. Terrible governor. Maybe 
we might be the generation that sees Armageddon. That Ronald Reagan will win a very substantial victory tonight. It's going to be a nuclear war. In Florida, NBC News. Yeah. So, these are clips from the film, and it's during the Reagan years, like the 1980s, and Reagan's about to win the presidency, and everyone believes it's going to be the end of the world, right? The end of the world. Nuclear annihilation. But interestingly, Armageddon isn't about nuclear annihilation. It's about war against God, isn't it? It's about Satan bringing to bear his weapons against the Most High. You know, I'm glad. Here's the opening of the film. As you can see, it says Armageddon time right there against the backdrop of Corona Park. Unbelievable. Okay, then. Time for attendance. Jennifer Ashkenazi. So obviously there's a lot of Jewish references. There you heard Ashkenazi. That's about all I'm going to say about that. Here. What are you looking at? So this is Johnny. And his dream is, guess what? To work for NASA. Now as this thing plays out, you will see that Johnny and Paul are essentially one in the same person they're Gemini's of one another Paul's dream is to become an artist Johnny's dream is to work for NASA Apollo mission patch stickers <laughs> well that's so cool I got the whole set my stepbrother gave him to me he's in the Air Force down in Florida right near NASA <laughs> now obviously it isn't Johnny, who gets to be an astronaut, it's Paul, which is the Trump character. How? Well, through the Artemis program that he established, the return to the moon. So essentially, Paul is the astronaut, not Johnny. But since they're one and the same, now you're starting to see what's going on here. Now, the first clue that these boys are linked together in some kind of weird Gemini pair is that Johnny lives in Hollis Hills. HH. Just as they're walking by a license plate number that says 88, HH, and 44. Watch. So weird. Where are you living again? Hollis. <laughs> Hollis. He says, Hollis, look on the plate. It's 4488. Now, we Gotta get on the bus. now, weirdly, I was also decoding the TV series Manifest. And an address came up on a death certificate. And when I plugged that in, the address on the death certificate in season four, of manifest it took me to Hollis Hills and I thought oh big nothing sandwich there's nothing in Hollis Hills it's kind of close to Trump's boyhood home in Queens it's right next door but I filed that away in my brain and after I got through the first two episodes of manifest I pull up this movie I start decoding it and I hear Johnny say Hollis and I'm like, whoa, mind blown, right? See how the Holy Spirit works? It connects everything for you. I'm going hang with you guys. Yeah, uh, see you later. See you tomorrow. Send hut. So, it becomes apparent that Johnny represents Trump's dark side. Now, several men of color have explained this dark side of Trump, if you're listening carefully. Two of those men of color are Geminis, just like Trump. Kodak Black and Lil Wayne, both pardoned by Trump. They're both Geminis. Kodak Black described Trump as a super gremlin. 
who could stand up. And Kanye West described Trump as having dragon energy. And that dovetails right into the theme of this film. As we begin to realize that Trump has a really bizarre and unconventional relationship with the black community, doesn't he? Now, here of course is Paul in the mirror, the man in the mirror. Now, look, I'm not going to try to tell you that this for sure relates to the Gemini, the man in the mirror. Because every single movie, someone looks in a mirror, right? But it does kind of fit into all this, doesn't it? Now, this rocket theme persists throughout this movie. You're going to see him as he's looking in the mirror. You'll see right here it says, Apollo. Build the Apollo. Moon landing craft. Right next to Muhammad Ali. I'm heavyweight champion of the world. So, Paul, which is the Trump character, becomes very self-absorbed. He's kind of cocky. He's essentially a sociopath. He never cries or gets upset unless it's something that's going to directly affect his life, his livelihood, his rights, or whatever. Even when his grandfather dies, who he's very, very close to in the film, he doesn't even cry. Everyone thinks he's going to freak out, and he doesn't. He's just stone cold, no emotions. He's a sociopath. Now, what did I say to you, Mr. Graff, about doing your own work here? Here's another Gemini clue as Paul draws a copy of some artwork. Look, this is a copy. Class, we went to the museum. Who saw paintings like this? I remember. That's a copy. And you'll be a millionaire soon. Here's one of his episodes of, you know, him just fantasizing about being popular and famous. Now, look, all children do this, right? Because we're programmed to want to be famous and be rich. But they're depicting this in the movie for a reason. Look around. You're already famous. <laughs> Paul, you are a genius. You have a pure understanding of the work far above anyone else here. I know how inspired we all were by our trip to the Guggenheim and seeing those paintings by Kandinsky. So today, we're going to try our very own art project. Now, I don't show it here, but Johnny, his friend, wears a soccer ball t-shirt, which of course is a Crino drone. And Johnny is on the outs. He ends up kind of homeless, staying in... Paul's shed, but he's rejected by everyone, and, you know, he basically just roams around the streets as, at a certain point. But Paul then becomes elevated. He ends up going to a better school, an elite school, which I believe is Q Forest, is what they're representing, where his life is set on track to become a very important person. So, Paul then starts to lie about where he came from and how much money he has, kind of uh, rejecting his Jewish roots to advance himself in life. He lies to his friend, Johnny, about his, his family. He says his family is wealthy and they have money, and he goes and steals money out of his parents' box and gives it to Johnny to make himself look more important. And after his visit to the Guggenheim Museum on a class field trip, all of a sudden Paul's fantasies start growing out of control. Because Paul becomes obsessed with a Russian artist in one of his paintings. And look at this. Yeah. Here's the Russian arm artist, Kandinsky. And look at all the double digits in this artist's life numbers 66 44 77 and 
based on all of our research, we've discovered that this double digit number imprint is very much a characteristic of Trump's life. We found the 44 in his life, we found the 77s, we found the 66, right? And that's all in this artist's life imprint as well, this Russian artist. Keep watching here. The rocket! You got it! You like it? That's amazing! Can we make it? Yeah, we'll go to Flushing Meadow and we'll launch it. Holy cow! Now, his grandfather buys him a rocket and they're going to go to Flushing Meadows and launch the rocket. But before that happens, Paul and Johnny are in the subway and they're fantasizing about what they're going to do with their life. And they start hatching a plan to get out of their situation and to run away together to Florida. Now, Trump's presidency was marked by two eclipses that I'm going to show you next. One was on the winter solstice. This is it right here. December 26, 2019. This marked the beginning of the pandemic, the very first case that ever happened. And here you see the smiley face. Smile now, cry later. This is the summer solstice eclipse well into the pandemic during the lockdowns. And this is when everybody began to cry because the two weeks were over. And here we were sitting on our homes, our businesses in the toilet with no toilet paper. Now I want you to listen to this. Smile now, cry later. So this is frowny face, and then when you flip it, happy, happy face. face. I got chills because this is everything we covered. They're confirming it in this movie, but they're laughing and mocking us because very few people believe what we covered the first time around. But now they're going to believe it. Then next you're going to hear what appears to me to be an art of the deal mention. Listen. You study something you can fall back on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you a wonderful book by Edward de Bono called The Art of Success. That's the only art you need to concern yourself with. So, as Paul begins to take on the negative attributes of Johnny and his negative attitude, the family decides to try to groom him out of his bad behavior and set him up in an elite school that his brother already goes to. And they send him to what amounts to a Q Forest school. Trump's real grammar school. The school his father, Fred, donated a wing to. He'll have dinner with kings if he plays his cards right. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, Irving. This is a new chapter for you. <laughs> new chapter. You want no the Trump family is our family. So Fred, please stand up, would you? And we get Fred Trump, Trump's father, by name in the movie. So there are no doubts at this point. A special thanks to her father, who is leading the fundraising drive for our new library. Fred Trump, everyone. Then we get Marianne Trump. And now in the movie, she's introduced as Fred's daughter. But it was really his wife, Donald's mother, right? Now, we have an election coming up. Please welcome United States Attorney Mary Ann Trump. Now, this is shocking. It's literally shocking because we did a bunch of decodes on Mary Ann McLeod Trump, didn't we? Someone came on the channel the other day. You're just stretching stuff. Trump's not from Scotland. He's from Germany. Come on. Come on, you guys. His mother's from Scotland. His father's from Germany. Okay? Got to keep this all straight. Now, 
Marianne is played by Jessica Chastain. When was she born? 77. Another double digit. Marianne? Thank you so much, Headmaster Fitzroy. And thank you, Father. Now, as this is going on, these children are shooting spitwads out of pipes. Pan's pipes. Remember, these are the fangs of the serpent. These hollow reeds. Pan's reeds. Cut off in ancient Roman lore and mythology to form syrinx. Pan's or syrinx was cut off and Pan used her hollow reeds as his pan pipes. Today, I'm not here to give you the same old talk. I'm going to give it to you straight. You're going to want to go to a good college. You're going to want to succeed. So she's given this lecture. Now, it's obvious this is they're talking about Q Grammar School. Why? Because did you you just heard Fred say he donated a wing and that actually happened in real life at Trump's Q Grammar School. We did an entire video on that in the playlist, so I won't belabor the point. But basically Q was the model that was adopted by all American educational systems to prepare children to be workers in a role rather than to nurture their creativity. The Marxist system also picked winners and losers. So, if you went to certain schools, you became part of the elite class, the rulers of our society. If you went to other schools, you became a worker. This is why student individuality and growing outside the box is not permitted. This is why they require you to feed them back the exact answers that they already give you. You see how this works now. The winners and losers have already been selected. Unless you follow the example that I'm going to set forth for you. Well, when I came here, no one handed me anything for free. You may be saying to yourself, what does she know? Now, I chopped this up a bit, but most of her speech is in this montage. But if I don't chop it up, the algos will get us. How did I succeed? I knew there was no free lunch by good old fashioned hard work. And that's how you're going to make it. So, on Paul's first day of school, his father reveals this Marxist agenda just before this moment here when he tells Paul that he looks ready for work. Why? Because the school gives the children briefcases as a symbol of career. Now, where have we seen these briefcases before? I'm going to show you in a second. I was a woman in a man's business, but I kept on fighting through college, law school, the U.S. Attorney's Office. Now, I do not believe Marianne McLeod Trump achieved all this, so this is kind of weird. You people in this institution are going to wind up on top. That's right, girls. I'm talking to you, too. Mm -hmm. You can be anything you want to be in this, the greatest country in the world. It'll now, weird thing is, Jessica Chastain was born in Sacramento. That's where I was born. And she was born in, like I said, 77. I was born in 73. She's a little bit younger than I am. It'll be because you earned. But she was probably born at Sutter Memorial Hospital, which is where I was born. Just weird, you guys. Weird. Go away there. And you'll know, at the end of the day, it won't be because of a handout, right? This, this says, I am ready to work. I come as a student. I can't even have a normal knapsack. A normal uh, knapsack? Why would you want a normal knapsack when you can have this? This is an attache case. This is class A1. So where have we seen... The briefcase. Let's see who gets it first. Let's go back in the chat here. Make sure you guys are with me. Where have we seen 
a crowd full of people with a briefcase. One of you knows. Because you guys are paying attention. Where have we seen a crowd full of briefcases before? Yes, this is nuts, isn't it? It's nuts! I almost didn't do a show today, but I started watching the movie yesterday afternoon. I worked on it for about six hours. Then I had to edit it together. Then I had to put together my show notes. And I'm like, I'm going to do a show tomorrow. Because, you know what? It's either Black Friday and people are out shopping. Or, they're watching and decoding and learning something about the truth of our reality. So I figured many of you would tune in. And it seems like you have. iPad Go 2. Thanks. I'm just me. You just be you. Got the answer. There is a crowd of people in iPad Go 2 in suits with a briefcase. The Antichrist comes... Oh, let me see if we can find this. Let's see if we can find this. Brief case. Let me see if we can find this here. Uh, quickly. Uh, suits, maybe. A oh, brother. I want to find it. It's not available. Go to Heliophant. I'm not playing the clip because uh, this iPad Goat 2 has gotten really sensitive. So if you start playing these clips, uh, they'll copyright strike you. Let's see here. Helio, let's go to the gallery here. It's got to be in here. Oh, here. I think this is it. No, he pops up through a crowd of people, and they're all wearing suits. doesn't look like they're going to show us here. But anyway, needless to say, that's what they're probably talking about. The robot army of workers that have already been predetermined, predestined for your role in the world order. Why do you think we're sitting here at 113,000 subscribers and we cannot break through, regardless of posting videos every single day that almost a thousand people a day tune into because we've gotten stopped. They don't want this channel to become a mainstream truth channel. Notice how we get to about 700 people and they start kicking people off the stream. Literally, like 50 of you in the chat are like, I just got kicked off the stream all at one time. Okay. They already, the algorithms already have the players. And if you're not a player, no matter how hard you try to reach people, you're just going to be stuck in your place. Now, they'll let you make money and pay your mortgage and all that. They'll let you do that. But to actually make a difference, only if you've sold out will they actually let you become mainstream. Now, let's keep going here because there's a lot more. So, Paul's grandfather gets sick, and he's about to die. Let's watch. And he takes Paul out to launch the rocket that he bought for him. Where does he launch it? Corona Park. Flushing Meadows. Queens. I put these markings on the side of the rocket. And the rockets are marked, of course, aren't they? What do rockets represent? Syringes. The marked syringes. Yeah, I saw that USA and you got all the payload markings. Yeah. The payload, the payload of the payload in the syringe. They're literally telling us the truth. It's a little windy today, so it, uh, that might affect it. If we're lucky, it'll go straight up and come straight down near us. Six. Gone. Hey, oh. that's something. Yeah. So, there you go. If you had any doubts in your mind, any doubts whatsoever, they're telling you. Now, oh, Casey, they're just trolling him. Actually, no, they're not. Okay? Because this is a uh, Jewish sympathetic film. And Trump loves Israel, doesn't he? 
And so they're telling a story here, aren't they? And this actually makes him look good if you if you don't have eyes to see. You see a boy who, you know, really doesn't want to be part of the elite class, but he kind of got forced into it. He's going to do with it the best he can. That's the story that they're painting here. But if you read between the lines, you see all the symbolism. Let's keep watching here. Now, Paul, which is Trump, hatches a plan to steal an Apple computer from his new school so that he can sell it at a pawn shop and pay for him and Johnny to run away to Florida so that Johnny can go work for NASA and be an astronaut and Paul can be an artist. This is their plan, right? But Johnny gets caught trying to pawn the computer. Takes to a pawn shop. Pawn shop owner calls the cops. Johnny gets arrested and takes the fall for the plan that Paul came up with. Now, I didn't include a clip of this scene, but to me, the what does, oh, let me ask you guys what you think the Apple computer theft is a metaphor for. I think it's a lot more powerful when you guys come up with the answers. What is the metaphor of the Apple computer being stole out of Paul's classroom? see who gets it first there you go snowball got it he bit the apple it was the temptation of the bite of the apple from the garden of eden so johnny gets caught he takes the fall for the whole thing which sets his life in motion to become targeted and marked because once you get an arrest on your record you become targeted and it was all trump's fault remember when kodak black said that he helped Trump out of a situation? It's all starting to make sense now, isn't it? It's all starting to make sense. you got to watch that interview with Kodak Black in which he's talking about Trump as a super gremlin and how Trump owed him one and he was just getting the favor back. This is weird, you guys. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Okay, let's keep going here. There's even more. Now, as the movie starts to come to a close... Fred Trump speaks again at the school and he talks about it being an elite school in case you had any doubts in your mind or you think I'm trying to stretch any of this. Yeah. The annual Forest Manor Thanksgiving dance. And of course it's a Thanksgiving dance and he pretty much whitewashes Thanksgiving. This is a wonderful tradition we have that our family has sponsored over the years. First of all, Happy Thanksgiving. Personally, when I look out and I see all these beautiful kids, you're ready to face the world. It's a chance to come together, be grateful for all we've been given. Who, who's the actor who plays Fred Trump? His name is John Deal. He was born on May 1st, Illuminati Day. Let's keep watching. And all the positive things in life to be CEOs and senators and presidents you are the elite because you have an obligation to be the leaders in business and finance politics you are the elite so Paul walks out of the school as Fred Trump gives a speech about being elite but we all know the rest of the story. What a weird movie. I couldn't have more hope than I do at this very moment. So, ultimately, Armageddon time is about the final war of Armageddon when the Antichrist takes on God in the final battle. That's what the Bible says. It's not about nuclear annihilation. It's about God versus the Antichrist isn't it and the whole flushing meadows aspect of all this is about the portal that was open which we were trying to tell you guys really happened the world's fair remember all the links between polio 
that they were programming us for polio during the 1939 World's Fair. They had an old exhibit on it. And then how it, it was much like the current spamdemic and the smack the nations. Something came through at the World's Fair, Tomorrowland. So, that's what I had for you guys today. I'm also going to be doing another show on Sunday. And we're going to decode the first two episodes of Manifest. Season 4. Wow. Cool. Dr. Savage says, my community tab shows my Robert Trump death prediction two days before it happened. Wow, good job, Dr. Savage. Dr. Savage has provided some critical information on this channel that we've used over the years. Thanks, Dr. Savage. I've got his channel featured on the front of my channel. For those of you who want to go subscribe to him. I'm real careful about who I endorse these days. It seems there's been a pattern of people, as soon as I endorse them, they'll Bet stab me in the back or something. So I know Savage won't do that to me because he's been on the channel for a long time. All right, let's keep looking at the chat here. Yes, coming through the arch at the White House with Trump. Also in his military academy. It says through these portals have come many men or something like that. And there's an arch. And Trump is standing at the tip of the spear. Another portal. Which of course is also his coat of arms. Is a fist. Apollo's arrow. Holding Apollo's arrow coming up through a portal. So. Weird times you guys. Weird times. You guys have any questions? Anything you guys want to talk about before we end the show today? If you want to call sometime, I got more interesting stuff on the syrinx, says Snowball. All right, it's been real busy. It's holidays and everything. Uh, but at some point, I'll probably reach out to you, but I have your phone number. Syrinx, the temple of syrinx. It's always been about the syrinx. All right. Much love, everybody. Please thumbs up the video. If you haven't already. Tower Grove Park is a needle laid out. I'll have to take a look at that. All right. Okay. Oh, never be afraid to ask any questions on this channel. The only rule we have here is to be polite. About, even if you disagree with something, just be polite. Extend the same courtesy that we extend you. And you can bring up anything you want. Okay, so some of you already got knocked offline. The new Vidco uh, Czar. Have I looked into that? No, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, never be afraid to ask. Okay. Wonder if there's a needle on the Sphinx. Hmm. Much love to you. Thanks, Antoinette. Thanks, peculiar people. Thanks, Cheyenne. All right, I guess we'll end the, the show there. I love each and every one of you guys. Take care and be safe, you guys.